guys? Welcome back to I'm So Craigie. Today I'm in Iceland. I've been in Iceland three times before, guys. It's my fourth time here. It's winter time, so I'm hoping to see the Northern Lights. But in any case, we're going to be checking out some awesome waterfalls and some awesome wild hot springs that you can chill in for free. Iceland is one of those countries where to really benefit the most from your visit, you need to rent a car. I went to Iceland for just three days, searching for some wild hot springs. I decided to rent a car and sleep in the car while I was out there, so I could stay out of the city, save money on accommodation, and have my freedom to roam about. Feels good to be back out here guys making a new video for I'm So Craigie. This is the first video of the year that I'm making. My previous two videos I've released this year, I filmed them last year so I haven't actually got out and made a video this year. Feels good to be out here shooting some stuff again. I did have skiing in Scotland lined up for you guys last weekend I was meant to go. It was going to be skiing in Scotland volume 2, I missed my flight so that got cancelled unfortunately. Iceland is such an interesting country guys, like they haven't got a McDonald's. I think they pride themselves on that, good for them. Very few countries countries in this world that don't have a McDonald's so well done Iceland on that one but they do have a KFC <laughs> Yeah, you're probably wondering what's the shower situation over the next few days. I haven't got a change of clothes. I am going dirty, guys. I'm going to be looking for hot pools, so I'm going to be soaking in the hot pools, not necessarily washing in them, but this is just going to be a grimy trip. I'm not eating, I'm fasting the whole time. I'm on a real tight budget. It's the end of the month. It's the end of February right now. I get paid monthly, so I don't have really that much money. This car was obviously not budget travel, but by getting the car, I could save money on accommodation and I get to see the place. Yeah, I've got to pay for fuel, so that's basically the only thing I'm going to be buying while I'm out here is fuel. I might buy a bottle of Brennivin, Black Death, they call it here, Icelandic liquor. I love it. I might buy a bottle of that to warm me up at night. Reykjavik is the most northern capital city in the world, sitting just below the Arctic Circle at about 65 degrees north. It's quite a vibrant and interesting little city. There's a few decent things to see and do there. Make sure you check out the cathedral, which can be found on top of the hill, and the opera house, which can be found on the coast. Make sure you view the opera house at night though, as the building is lit up in multiple colours, constantly changing and blending into each other. If you're after a drink, make sure to head to Lebowski Bar, which had a good vibe from what I can remember. If you don't rent a car you can easily get a coach from Keflavik airport to Reykjavik and it takes about an hour. If you're lucky you can see the northern lights from Reykjavik too. That's where I was when I first seen them eight years ago. There is a geothermal foot bath called Kavika foot bath in the city where you can soak your feet with an amazing postcard view. The famous blue lagoon is located in Keflavik near the airport and the newer and less known sky lagoon is right in Reykjavik city. Both of these are overrated and overpriced and for about the same cost of entry in both of these lagoons, I rented a car and went into the wilderness to find free and natural hot springs. I only spent about an hour in Reykjavik. I just visited my Icelandic friend Herdis. For the remainder of day one, I wanted to drive what is known as the Golden Circle. The Golden Circle is a 190 mile route of Iceland's three most popular natural attractions. Thingvellir National Park, the Giza Geothermal Area and Golfoss Waterfall. You can do a day tour from Reykjavik to see these. The tour prices vary and can cost you anywhere from 50 quid to 100 quid plus. Be careful driving a car on these icy roads guys. My very first first time visiting Iceland, I rented this crappy 1.3 litre Hyundai and ended up skidding off the road. I ended up having to pay for the car to be recovered and it cost me a lot of money. I was gutted to say the least. When it happened it was like the 4th of January and around that time of year there's only about 6 hours or even less of daylight every day. So I was preparing for a long cold winter night in my car in the middle of nowhere before two lost German guys pulled up in their camper van and saved me. Drove me back to Reykjavik. Shout out if you're watching lads.
Guys, I'm currently stood between America and Europe. These are the two tectonic plates of America and Europe. Guys, this is called Thing Valir. It's the only place in the world where you can stand between two continental plates. It's pretty cool. It's free to see, guys. Come and check it out. Do you wanna know a story? I'm at Goldfoss Waterfall. The last time I came here, which was like in January 2015, I think, this was completely frozen over. It's only February now, guys, but it's good to see that it's running again. The camera's not giving this any justice, guys. This is absolutely magnificent. I got to Franelaug Hot Spring just as it was getting dark. The plan was to sleep there that night because it's miles away from civilization and any light pollution. And I thought if I got lucky, I might be able to watch the Northern Lights while relaxing in the hot spring. I made it to a hot port, guys. It's just the end of day one here in Iceland. Stuck to my plan, seen the golden circle and um, found my camp spot tonight, which is here. I chose to camp here for obvious reasons. Well, one, I was hoping it would be a clear night so I could just lie in this lovely warm water and watch the northern lights, but it's super cloudy. Second reason is so in the morning I can wake up and have a little bath. It's a lush place guys. Don't waste money going to places like the Blue Lagoon, it's so expensive, it's like 50 quid or something to get in, I can't remember. Admittedly I have been there myself, but I'll never go back. And it's just a tourist trap, so expensive. Save that money guys, rent yourself a car and come to a place like this. It's just a random hot spring that's been like built up around in the middle of a field on this farmer's land. It's got an amazing view of mountains just over there. If it's a clear sky, you've got the northern lights. It's free of charge. There's a little hut there for changing in. There's three separate pools. This is great, I'm here by myself. And i got all night. So I'm just gonna hope the clouds clear up. That geothermal hot pool then that I was just saying, it was awesome. I got there just as it was getting dark and the camera really couldn't pick anything up. Chilled in there for like three hours. I was hoping to see the northern lights while I was in there. It started snowing while I was in there, so that was pretty cool. It's like bath water warm, it's lovely and warm. But then like a group of like 15 Spanish teenagers, like 18 year olds turned up. So I was like, well that's my cue to leave. So I left. I faced my car north now, so I'm facing north. I might just set my lamp periodically through the night and just wake up and just see, just look up in the sky, see if the aurora's dancing about. I don't have high hopes for it tonight guys, but in any case, there's no harm in trying. So basically all I packed with me is a one pair of cold weather socks, a couple of pairs of like underwear and other socks, the clothes on my back, <laughs> so as you can see I'm still wearing my, my works t-shirt. <laughs> So I was meant to pack another old t-shirt actually, but I forgot. And my sleeping bag, really. And, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, roll-on deodorant, and a small hand towel for the hot pools. That's pretty much all I brought. So I'm really packing light on this one, guys. I'm pretty much ready for bed now. I've got my sleeping bag. Chair does recline a little more, but I'm gonna leave it upright for now, because I'm gonna watch a little bit of YouTube. Believe it or not, I get 4G connection. I'm in the middle of nowhere in Iceland, and I got 4G connection, so that's, that's awesome. Because it's still pretty early, I'm pretty tired though. That pool is incredible, it's absolutely free there's no rules do you know what i mean that's one of the best parts it's not just the fact it's free it's the fact that you can take beer you can take glass if you want most people are like no glass in the pool you can if you want do what you want no rules 
Go naked if you want. Go late at night and shag your missus there. Do what you want and it's free. It's a no-brainer, guys. I'm gonna wake up in the morning, get out of this, jump in that pool and uh, watch the sunrise. So I'll show you the pool then. You'll see what I mean. It's really cool, guys. Anyway, I'm gonna watch some YouTube, get some sleep and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Good night. Oh, boy, did. So half past seven in the morning, still at the uh, hot springs, but nobody's here. So hopefully I can get it to myself for the morning, which is wicked. I seen the northern lights last night. I was watching the northern lights for about an hour, maybe they were there, but I couldn't film them. I couldn't get the settings right on my camera to see them. Absolutely gutted. They weren't like super sharp. They were a bit blurry. So I think there might be a little bit of thin cloud cover underneath them. Tried getting some video footage. I'm not professional, that sort of stuff. I was doing it off Google, copying Google. Couldn't get it right. I think I just have the wrong lens for it which is really annoying because I came here specifically to film the northern lights for this video uh, I mentioned in my Lapland video that I was gonna go to Svalbard but I couldn't get to Svalbard so I came here to do it instead and I finally seen the northern lights and couldn't get the footage for you guys it was really really annoying the camera was just seeing black I couldn't see anything not even like a glimmer of green so um, unfortunately that's the case but it was really lush it was really nice to just chill here and uh, watch them go hopefully it'll be the same again tomorrow tonight sorry I don't know, I'm freezing by the way as well, like I was fine up until about 3 in the morning or something, then it got real cold, real cold, I got a little bit of a shiver on, so um, I'm going to go to the hot springs, <laughs> really excited. It was about minus 5 outside, but with the wind chill it was bitterly cold. So getting out of my DOS bag took some psyching up, but knowing there was a 40-ish degree hot pool, just a 5 minute walk away was my motivation. The little Viking style hut that has been built there was cleverly built over a hot water stream which passes through it on the floor, so the heat from the stream gathers up inside the hut making it a little warmer than the outside, a drying off and changing afterwards. I warmed up in the pool for about 2 hours and had the whole place to myself. It it was blissful. This place is absolutely amazing. I'd come back to Iceland again just to camp here for two nights. Getting out of the water afterwards was a mission, but I had loads to see that day, so I had to hit the road. So guys, I'm inside the little hut by the hot springs. Let's see if you can see me a little bit better. So there we go, there's, there's the outside, there's the water. I'm inside this little hut. And it's absolutely Baltic. Shh. Like the ends of my fingers are numb. I've got a little bit of a shake going on. I'm I'm so cold. So uh, I can get in that water because I need to warm up. sheep back in the day, that's what a farmer used to use it for. I don't know why he doesn't use it for that anymore, but he sort of opened it up to the public, which is really cool. Really nice of him. Oh, it's freezing out there, boys. I'm not looking forward to getting back out later. Oh, but here's the warmest part, it's with the spring sort of springing out. Now uh, you can see that layer bubbles coming out, it's nice down there. If you come right to the wall at the end here, guys, it's where the spring comes out. I don't know if you can see the bubbles. There we go, just little bubbles popping out there. It's like a really sh jacuzzi. It just massages your back a little bit. It's really nice, but this is the warmest part as well. Not only because you've got the wind cover from, from the brick wall that's all around you, but um, also because this is where the spring is. <laughs> I just found a petrol station in the middle of nowhere. Refueled the car, we're ready to go. I just brushed my teeth and freshened up. Still wearing the same clothes. <laughs> but guys, it's day two in Iceland. Let's go and check out some waterfalls. My 
My first stop was a waterfall called Hayfoss, which unfortunately was unreachable due to the snow, but I'd say it's definitely worth a visit in the summertime. I'm trying to get to Hayfoss waterfall. It's about seven kilometers that way. You can drive right at my car. It's not the ideal car to be driving in that terrain. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go to Hayfoss, which is a shame because I've just drove an hour out of my way to get to where I am now. But I'm not I'll show you some pictures of it on the screen now guys, but I'm not gonna drive there, I'm not taking the risk. After Hayfoss, I drove to the south coast of Iceland towards two waterfalls called Kvernfoss and Skogafoss, which are right next to each other. Kvernfoss is a hidden gem that is often overlooked or missed because of its giant neighbour Skogafoss. These two waterfalls were the furthest point from Reykjavik I drove on the south coast. I went here first and worked my way back. The next stop was a hot pool found at the foot of a mountain called, here we go, Seljavalalaug swimming pool. <laughs> I use the word hot very lightly here. It was lukewarm at best. You park your car over there somewhere guys and you've just got to walk along here towards that little opening right there. The coordinates for the car park for this pool and all the attractions in this video are in the video description for you. You can just copy and paste them into Google Maps. There's a pipe that delivers the warm water to the pool from a nearby hot spring. So near that pipe is the only warm part of the pool. The water is really dirty too, but the view is lush. On the drive to the third and final hot spring, I passed by Saljalandafoss Waterfall. My last stop was Reykjadalur Hot Spring Thermal River. I had no idea what I was getting myself into with this one. In my head, I thought it was just a 20 minute hike to get there. Boy, was I wrong. Guys, this is like something from like the land before time. Remember those, those films? Look at this now, this is incredible. That isn't water, that's mud or clay. That is incredible. It's like some Jurassic World shit, this is. That. Wow. This is the hike to the hot water. It's like a winter wonderland, isn't it? I don't want to repeat what happened in Scaffold Park. I didn't think we'd get lost to Scaffold Park, I almost did. But I don't want to be getting lost. Hi, guys. Just some hot spray. 
things. But I'm speaking to a few people on the way, and they said it's totally worth it, so I'm almost there. I think this is it. The hike took about an hour in the snowy conditions and went up Reykjadalur de Lure Valley, way up into the mountains. I started the hike with a little over one hour before sunset, so I had to be quick. The river was lush and warm and had warmer and deeper parts depending on how far up you go. I just settled for the first part I found, which wasn't very deep. I'd recommend coming here in the summer. In the winter it was a bit tough hiking through the deep snow and I couldn't actually see a path. I was just following the trail other people had left behind. And I made it at last. That was a hell of a hike. It's almost getting dark. It's pretty cold. I'm way up in the maintenance. But it is a lush. I made it guys, made it to the hot pools and I'm on my way back to the car, probably got another 45 minutes to hike so it'll be dark when I get back but I'm not too worried. After the hike, I drove to Klifar Vatten Lake, nearby to Keflavik Airport, and packed up there for the night, facing north, of course. I was lucky enough to see the Northern Lights again that night. Guys, thank you so much for watching. You know the usual mumbo jumbo, like, subscribe, share my channel, guys. Today is the first birthday of I'm So Craigy. So for my birthday present, all I ask is that you subscribe to me, guys. On the screen now is a map of the route that I traveled while I was in Iceland. I hope this helps you out with your travels to Iceland, guys. I hope you learned a little from this video and I'll see you on the next one. Cause I hang my head.